Just wanted to give you the morning shout out, say hello, and see how you are doing. As we get moving forward with our summer, we are going to be diving into our series called Nav Kids on a Mission. So, just a little intro, and to remind you, each week we will be studying about missions, missionaries, and the book of Acts. Before we get started today, I want to remind you about our central Bible verse for the series, which comes from Acts chapter 1, verse 8. So watch on the screen while I read the verse. Acts 1, 8 says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. We'll go over that verse every week multiple times as we reiterate what it is to be a missionary. And now to remind you what it is. A missionary is simply someone who tells others about the good news of Jesus. You could be telling them about the good news right in your own backyard or spreading the good news around the entire world. And that's what One Acts is talking about. They started in Jerusalem. They started right where they lived. And then they got a little further out, Judea and Samaria. And then they didn't stop there. They went to the ends of the earth. Missions does the same thing. Missions can be in your own backyard or all the way to the ends of the earth. So stay, stick with us, follow along each week as we discover NAB Kids on a mission in our own backyards and around the world. Good morning, NAB Kids. I am back with you again with another exciting missionary tale. And this time we're coming to you from Vienna, Austria. And with us this morning, I have Caleb and Brittany Dossett. They are missionaries there to the International Christian School of Vienna. So we are going to talk with them this morning about what it's like to be teachers and missionaries all at the same time. And as you can see, they have one of their kids with them this morning. <laughs> and we are going to even maybe explore what it's like to be a missionary kid. So as we get started, I want you guys to tune in, tune your ears here, and get your hearts ready to listen and learn more about what it's like to be a missionary and just what it is to go. As Acts 1-8 says, our theme verse, we go all the way to the ends of the earth. And Vienna, Austria for us would be nearly the end of the earth. It's far away. All right, so Brittany and Caleb, let's get right into it. The first question I have for you this morning is, what does missions mean to you and the people you work with at the school? So our school is a place where about 60 different countries are represented by the students. So that means we have kids from Nigeria, kids from Kenya, then kids from Saudi Arabia, Korea, Japan. So there's students from all over the place. And First of all, that's really exciting because whenever we talk about Jesus, we can share the story of Jesus in these kids' lives, and then hopefully, uh, as they grow and change, they can go back to their home country or go to other countries and share that story. And something else that makes our school kind of unique and a little bit different than other places I've been before is that a lot of the students are not Christians and they come from homes that are not Christian homes. And so all the teachers are Christians, and a good chunk of students are too. But if you're thinking in terms of percent, maybe only 30% are Christians, and the rest of them are still, still kind of growing and waiting to hear that story and waiting to be changed. And that's what's really exciting for us, is whenever we can tell those kids about Jesus, or just show who Jesus is through our lives and our actions. I think that's really amazing. You know, you get to be there and be in that moment when some of these kids may hear about Jesus for the very first time. 
And I think that's incredible that you get to help shape that moment. And guys, the, the Bible tells us that we're not always the one that will um, reap the harvest. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us that sometimes all we do is plant seeds. So kids, these guys, sometimes all they do is plant the seed because if these kids are only with them for a couple of years, then they don't always get to know what the end of the story will look like for some of these kids. So planting the seed can be the most important thing that some of us can hope to do in the life of someone who doesn't know the story of Jesus. Amen. Yeah. So why did you guys become missionaries and why Vienna? Well, I went to the school when I was a kid. I was one of the missionary kids that went to the school. And so after we got married and we were graduating college, we were trying to find a place to go. We really wanted to go international somewhere. Mm -hmm. And we really wanted to work in a school. So we knew we wanted to be teachers internationally. And some schools we found were missionary schools and some weren't. And the more we prayed about it, the more we realized we were more interested in going to a place like where we are now and sharing the story of Jesus than we were going somewhere to just, um, I don't know. Teach English. Teach English, yeah. yeah. We were really interested in what it could look like to be at a school that was all about Jesus primarily. And so because we knew of this school, because I went here as a kid, uh, we kept pursuing it and it worked out really smoothly. Worked out just the way God planned. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so next question. How long have you guys been missionaries? And has it been in Vienna the whole time? Yeah, that's a great question. We moved to Vienna in um, August of 2013. And we were here for four years at the same school. And then we moved back to America in 2017. Oh, okay. And we lived there for two years in Illinois, um, Bloomington, Illinois, which is about two, two and a half hours from Collinsville. Yeah. Um, and we weren't doing missions there. Um, we just felt a call to be closer to family. Um, but that also just really made our hearts realize that this is what God had for us and what we wanted to do long term. So then in, what is the year? 2019, <laughs> we moved back to Vienna. So we've been okay. back here now for one full year. So we just finished our fifth year, but those were separated by yeah. our two years in the state. And uh, so kids, uh, Brittany actually has some ties to navigation. So before it was Navigation Church, it was Sun Life, for those of you that don't know. And she went to the church for a few years while she was in high school and even attended the Christian school that we had. Um, it was CCA, right? Yeah. Collinsville Christian Academy. <laughs> yeah. And so she actually knows um, some of the folks at church. Do you know Pastor Aaron? Yeah. And she we knows Pastor together. Aaron. That's what I thought. And uh, she knows Pastor David and she knows all the Galloways. Um, she went to school with a lot of them. So you probably know um, the Moggers as well. And yep. yep. So she knows a lot of people you guys know. It's really cool to think that being a missionary is not such a foreign and distant thing. There are people that you guys know who are doing that now. And I feel like that makes bring, brings it home, makes it easier yeah. to to um, be something that even as kids, we can go, God, can this be me? Is this what you want? You know? Yeah. So it's really cool. Uh, so we've talked a little bit about <laughs> the school and the uniqueness of that. Can you guys tell us just a little bit more about why you think this school is such a unique mission compared to maybe other missionaries around the world? To touch on that? Yeah. So as you were talking about how missions can be close to home, it was struck me that there are so many different kinds of mission fields 
we have friends who uh, used to work in like uh, the North Africa regions and for them the mission field was very different. It looked a lot like going into people's homes and sharing dinner together. Um, it looked a lot like having conversations about uh, Islam and Christianity and how those two match up. We have friends who work in China, in uh, Turkey, and in all these different places. There's lots and lots of things you can do. You can help refugees, for example. There's a huge need in the world right now for people who love refugees. Um, um, because of there being so many different things, um, that's I think kind of what makes this school unique in my mind. Is it's just one more way that we can love people who are hurting or lonely. So these students that come to this school usually, honestly, actually have a lot of money. They're usually not poor. Uh, they're usually quite wealthy considering the standards of the world. And uh, you guys probably know this, but sometimes being really rich or being comfortable even isn't really the answer. It's not really going to bring you happiness. And so what we find is our mission field here has a lot to do with working with people who think they have everything, but they also have a deep sense of yeah. something missing. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, what strikes me, what, what you're saying is what I'm hearing is like, these kids can be rich in so many areas and rich in so many things, but they are what the Bible would consider poor in spirit. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know? So they're rich in every other area except for their heart. Mm -hmm. And the Bible teaches us that the only place that matters where we're rich is our heart. Yeah. So it's <clears throat> really cool that you get to influence the one part of their life that can't be touched by money. And that can't be bought. Yeah. You know, the Bible tells us there's nothing we can do. There's nothing we can say. There's nothing we can buy that will secure our heart and secure our salvation. It's our faith in Jesus Christ. And for you guys to get to be that, I think that alone makes you guys super unique. And that's really cool. So... You guys work more in the school. Do you guys attend a regular church there? Yeah, we do. We have a church um, that is bilingual. It's German and English. And it was started by Americans um, about 10 years ago. So okay. it's been, we've seen a lot of growth in it since 2013. Yeah. It's a very international church, um, people from all over. So the sermons are typically preached in English and translated to German, like, as they speak. Okay. Um, yeah. So, so what is, what is the kids ministry like there? Do your kids go to kids ministry or do they sit with you in church? Yeah, our kids go to um, a class. They're with us for um, part of the scripture reading and for the song part of worship and then they go to a class together that's age three to six so right now they're together um and that is also taught in english and german so so your kids will be fully bilingual <laughs> oh, that's the hope <laughs> they need to teach me <laughs> do do the kids there does their children's church look similar to like Americans, do they do an activity and then a lesson? Or you said they do worship with the parents first. Yeah. So in our church, we do um, we do our own worship and, and the kids do it separate. So what kinds of activities do they um, do there? Yeah, they use um, the Jesus Storybook Bible. Um, so that's for sure similar to America and but they do not do music. Um, I don't know if that's something eventually, right now our church is working on purchasing a larger location. Okay. Um, so right now they just, they wouldn't have the space for that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, typically 
Ollie, in your because of COVID, we haven't been to church since February. So, Ollie, what's your church like when you go into a class? Do you do like a craft sometimes? Do you read the Bible in German and English? Can you tell her a little bit about it? For fun. We do it sometimes for fun in German, but usually we do it in English. Sometimes in German for fun? Yeah, but usually in English. Yeah. And do you do like a craft or an activity? We do craft all the time. All the time. Okay. So just like here in America. Yeah. Yeah. I can't remember if this is our church here or our church in the States, but don't you often have an idea that you leave service with? that's America. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Good job. Okay. So... Let's get back to the school that you teach at a little bit. Can you tell us what it is that typically brings families to the school? Because there, it's as the conversation we had a little earlier before you guys were here, before you kids were all here with us, they were telling me that this is a very special different school than just the regular public Austrian schools. So can you explain to us what typically brings kids to this school? Yeah, that's true. This school is very small, so that's one thing that makes it different. It, it's K through 12, so kindergarten through 12th grade. It's only about 340 students, I think. So it's pretty small, and what that means is that there's only a very specific kind of student that comes usually, and those students are usually kids who are the children of business people, or diplomats, or people associated with the UN, which is the United Nations, which has a big uh, headquarters here in Vienna. So those kids are usually the kinds of kids who come, but we do have we do have a lot of missionary kids and Austrian kids too. Mm-hmm. But one unique thing about them that we were talking about was that they don't often stay for very long. So they'll come for maybe two years and then move to a different country. Or they'll come for maybe five years and then move to a different country. Um, It becomes sort of a, I don't know what the right word is, sort of a celebration at graduation if there's even one student who's been there. (laughs) For several years. Yeah, there's always sort of a party. Probably Austrian, huh? (laughs) Yeah, right. They're probably the Austrian kid or the missionary kid. Or they're a staff kid. Yeah, Yeah, staff kid. (laughs) So I want to really quick circle back to a word you said, uh, diplomat. So this is one of those words that you would hear often maybe as a missionary, but in everyday life here in America, kids, I wonder if you even know what that word means. So on the bottom of the screen, we're going to put the definition for the word diplomat, but I want to explain it just a little bit. Basically, it just means that um, you are somebody who works in politics. You are, uh, you could be an elected official or you may not be, but basically you are in politics, but you live in another country representing your country. So, but you guys can see the definition there and rewind it if you need to, to understand that a little bit more or ask mom and dad. (laughs) Okay, let's get to the fun portion of this interview. What is the craziest thing you have eaten there in Austria? since you've been there. <laughs> well, the, you may have more stories, Caleb, from when you were a kid, too. Yeah, yeah that's true. I couldn't think of anything crazy. Did not you eat a fish one time? We've eaten fish, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but something weird that you can get here that we have not chosen to eat is you can get horse meat right? That's popular. Yeah. You, learned, you learned that our missionaries in Haiti quite often, that's what's on the table. And it's mostly there because there's no other choice. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. One of the strange things that they like to eat here is they like to eat something that's called Leberkäse. Mm. And I've had that before. It's not something I would recommend. <laughs> it's It's kind of like spam mixed with 
melted cheese and then cooled and then reheated. <laughs> My faces I'm making. So <laughs> you guys know what Provel cheese is from eating yeah. pizza. Me and my husband, Josh, are not fans of Proval cheese. And so while you're describing this spam-like meat, all I'm thinking of is Proval cheese. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not very good. They like a lot of um, sausages. They like yeah. sausages a lot, which we like. They yeah, like they have, this This isn't super weird. It's very good, actually. They have something called a Kese Kreiner. Okay. Which is a sausage that you can mm -hmm. cut up or put in a bun, and inside there's cheese. Kind oh, of more like, like a, that. It's pretty thick, like a bratwurst. Yeah. Oh man, I did some time. Not some time. I did a missionary trip in Copenhagen. Or um, well, we went to Copenhagen, but we were in Denmark, and um, we got to enjoy some yummy frankfurters while we were there. That was nice. Yeah. Yeah. What Brittany was just saying about that is pretty interesting. So they'll, if they deliver a package and you're not home, sometimes they'll deliver it to a neighbor instead. And that kind of shows a, a unique um, cultural experience of what Austrian culture is like. Yeah. They're yeah. very, very, very uh, honest. polite and honest. So for example, we ride the trains a lot mm -hmm. and there's no um, no turnstiles in the system. Oh, People can wow. walk on and off the train no matter, the, nobody's checking, they can get on and off whenever they want. Eventually someone might like surprise you. They might okay. pop up on a train and say, hey, I'm checking tickets, and then you might get ticketed. But it's not a daily thing, and so that's a really unique kind of it's just ex honor system. Yeah, expected that you have a ticket. You're not gonna get on without a ticket. Wow. It just shows that here in America, money speaks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's a really cool experience. Um, a lot of our kids here, I don't know how many of you guys have ever ridden a train or a bus, but here in America, you cannot get on the bus, you cannot get on the train without first showing that you've paid for it. Mm -hmm. So that, that is very unique, that's really cool. Yeah. Can you guys tell us about the your favorite time in country? And mm -hmm. again, Caleb, you may have a couple stories as <laughs> as a young person. Well, let's let's focus on this. What's your favorite time as a couple there, or you know, since you've been there as a family there in um, Austria? Yeah, we really like to get out of the city. Yeah, so Austria is just so beautiful. There's mountains and. Um, beautiful seas and well they call them seas I guess it would be lakes, lakes. <laughs> <laughs> the word for lake is is sea yeah okay <laughs> I get confused sometimes with my German and English but yeah getting out of the city is really nice um, <laughs> even within the city there's so many gorgeous parks that are just full of nature I mean like a seven minute walk for us is a place called the Prater which is just this huge, long street, but cars don't drive on it Okay. Um, for bikes and scooters and walking. And then there's just trees all around it. There's playgrounds and it's just really nice just to walk around in those areas. And our boys love riding their bikes. And so. I think one of my favorite things that we did together was we went on a trip with some friends of ours to the mountains and they have this uh, uh this this thing that you can do where you can rent a little go-kart and basically all it is is just wheels and brakes and a steering <laughs> wheel but no gas or anything yeah but you just give yourself a gentle push and you go down the mountain <laughs> and <gasps> there's this path that like this path that just has the, all these switchbacks yeah and you just turn and speed down the mountain it's like gravel switchback trail it's really fun you have to be careful because you can like flip over if you're yeah. being too crazy do you have to wear a helmet yes yeah i think they give you one yeah yeah that sounds yeah. like fun 
you were on my lap. Oh, wow. So they let you bring your... <laughs> yeah, you were little. You were only um, two. Oh, you want to say something? I I like to, to... I like when I want my scooter, not my bike. Mm -hmm. I like to do a ton of, like, <clears throat> twists oh, and jump. jump. Yeah. Funny hop. Yeah. Oh, so you're an, you're an adventurous too. Yeah. <laughs> you often ride like just little scooters. You use your foot. You know, those are a big thing here for kids to because you walk everywhere. So yep. for kids to get around the city, very common. Yeah, my daughter when we lived in Chicago would ride her scooter to the to the bus or to the train because then she didn't have to walk as far and it was easier for me to carry a scooter on the train than it was a bike. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yep. Yep. We know all about that. How many hours does it take you? Well, first of all, what do you guys consider your home base here in America? Mm. Okay. Illinois, for sure. My family is in Granite City um, and Caleb's family is in Bloomington, which are about two and a half hours away from each other. So right. yeah. it's really very close together um but when we lived there for the two years we were in bloomington okay so then if you're coming from bloomington and you're trying to get back to austria how many hours and what is your mode of transportation to go from bloomington to your front door there in your apartment building okay so we would go from bloomington we would drive to chicago o'hare airport um, and then we would take a flight. We try now that we have kids to do direct, <laughs> but it doesn't, doesn't always happen. And it is about, depending which way you're going because of wind right. and stuff, but it's a nine to 10 hour flight if you do direct. Okay. Um, from Chicago to the Vienna airport. And then either someone, a friend that has a car would pick us up or we would take what they call a Schnellbahn, which is a fast train um, from the airport into the city, okay. which takes maybe 25 minutes um, from the airport to the city. So okay. in total, it would take us uh, three hours to get to Chicago, 10 hour flight, another hour to our door. So. And how far is the nearest um, Schnellbahn from you? The, the Actually, where we live, yeah, where we live very close. We can um, get to one, we could walk in like 10 minutes to a train station. Now, do you, if you're coming back from the United States, I would venture you try and probably get somebody to pick you up because you probably have a lot of luggage, right? <laughs> now, yeah. You, you were mentioning to me earlier that you try and pick up supplies when you're in the States. What does that look like when you come back here? What are you trying to get to bring back to Austria? And why do you need to get it in the U.S.? And not there in Austria. Yeah, there are quite mostly for me than you, but there are a couple things he likes. So I would get um, vanilla extract. <laughs> I always back up on that, or um, brown sugar. You can find brown sugar in an Asian market here, so that's nice to have that option. But I usually stock up. And then any kind of over-the-counter medicine like Tylenol or ibuprofen, they don't have that here. Um, and then some things we stock up on for him are like pens that he likes to write with, um, pencils, yeah, school stuff usually. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And it, you try and get those things in the United States because they're either not available there or more expensive there, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so the things are, we use the euro here. I don't know if we have any euro to show. Oh, you can grab change to show one. <laughs> There's a shortage of change in the United States right now. I've heard that. So that's an interesting thing here that we can share. I know people in the States are kind of nervous about how they don't want you to use cash. Yeah. Um, here it's actually the opposite, and a lot of places will not take card. Oh, I have some of those. I have some of those. Yeah. That's basically a dollar. A little more. <laughs> yeah, just a little more. So yeah, here a lot of places, like if you go to a cafe, they won't take um, cards. They want you to use cash only. 
So we typically have to have cash on us just because you never know if a place is gonna take card. Yeah. So kids, a little math and economics lesson for you. <laughs> the reason why they want the European dollar, which is called the Euro, to be um, used and physically used is because right now their money is what we call stronger than the US dollar. And so the US is saying, don't use it because we need to hold on to what we have, use electronic money and pay for things over um, with your card or use what some of you kids may know as Bitcoin and pay for things that way while we work on strengthening our money. And Europe is saying, our money is really strong, spend it. <laughs> So that's <laughs> basics, a little, a little bit of why things are like that right now in the United States and Europe, uh, European countries. Mm. So what do your kids or even kids in the school like to do for fun? I know you mentioned the scooter, but is there anything else they like to do for fun? Yeah, there are in Vienna several different little, um, what would you call like the Alta Dona, like a river-ish type? Uh -huh, yeah. Um, so there are places you can go like paddle boarding or um, you can rent little boats and stuff like that. Kids like to do that a lot in the summer. Um, students here have a lot of freedom because they can ride public. Um, they can get anywhere by themselves. They don't have to count on their parents to drive them from here to there. They can just say, I'm going to go do this with my friends and just get on the train. So they have a lot of freedom in what they can do. It's very safe. Yeah, very safe for kids to ride public by themselves. And um, our kids love going to parks and playgrounds. Yeah, yeah if, you're, if you're a kid that's our kid's age, like between, I don't know, even five to ten probably, you would really like to go to the playgrounds. There's tons and tons of playgrounds. Um, within, I don't know, 10 minutes, we could probably make it to 15 different ones. So they're all over the place. Lots of options. They slides. They're stuff. different than America. They're like typically wooden playgrounds or metal, not like okay. the, the, the big plastic ones that you're yeah. used to. Yeah. Well, and you guys also oh, live no. in, um, you guys also live in a very urban area. Hi, buddy. Can you say hi? Hi. Hi, did you just wake up from your nap? Yeah. Yeah, I'm Jen. It's nice to meet you. Tell her your name. Um, Theo. Theo. <laughs> yeah. You're still waking up, buddy? Do you want to play? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well in here in the united states um especially where we live right now um kids you guys live in what's called more a um rural area wow. and so you most of the time have to drive to where you go where you're going unless you live like in downtown st louis Right. Um, but for you guys there in um, Vienna, Austria, you are basically downtown, and so public transportation is your your key way of getting around, like we talked yeah. about. So right now, your boys are both a little young to go to school, but what will they do um, when it's time for them to start school? What does that typically look like? Let's say, what does that look like for a missionary kid? And what? And because we've already talked about what it looks like for the international students. Yeah. Um, it really depends. Here they, what they would call kindergarten is more what you would think of as preschool or daycare in America. And that starts anywhere from age one. Um, some kids go when they're one. Our oldest, Ollie, so he started at an Austrian preschool when he was two. Um, and a lot of people that we know that are international or missionaries mostly do that just so their kids learn the language um they don't start proper schooling until first grade okay um so around age six is when they start proper elementary school and so for us our kids will start 
this past year, they were mostly home with me um, doing homeschooling. Ollie did attend an Austrian preschool for a little bit before COVID shut everything down. Um, but this coming September, they will both be at an Austrian preschool. And yeah, it's all in German, so we hope that they'll quickly pick up the language. Yeah. And then our goal, if all goes well, is for them to stay in the Austrian school system until about fourth or fifth grade, and then we would switch them to the school we work at. Very cool. Very cool. All right, guys, so the last question I have is a fun one, and um, I think it's interesting to learn these things. We'll pop it up on the bottom of the screen so you guys can see it. But my question for you is, is how do you say, hi, I love Jesus? And for you guys, it would be in German. Uh -huh. Do you know how to say that or not? How do you say hi? Tell her how to say hi in German. Hallo. Hallo. <laughs> I love. Do you know how to say I love Jesus? No. What's I love you? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Never. How do you say yeah. yeah, that's how you say I love you. So. For Jesus, we would probably say, Ich liebe Jesus. Wow. One more time, real slow for those of us over here in America. <laughs> so, hello. Hello. Ich. Ich. Yeah. Liebe. Ich. Liebe. 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 Okay. Jesus. Jesus. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hallo, ich liebe Jesus. Jesus. Okay. I try to say it the Spanish way and say Jesus. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that's really cool. You know what, guys? That's all the time we have for our friends over in Austria today. So let's wave goodbye to them, and I will see you guys on the other end and pray you out. Well, you guys, that's the end of NavKids on a Mission. I had so much fun creating these videos for you guys and talking with missionaries around the world. I got to catch up with old friends and make a bunch of new ones. You guys, we're gonna head into a little bit of a summer break and take a few weeks off, but we're not leaving you forever. We'll be back in the fall and we've got something for you in the meantime. So in the meantime, if you're looking for something to watch each Sunday, we have videos that are coming out on Mondays for our Nav Kids on a Mission VBS in a Bag. It's okay if you didn't join us for VBS this year, you're still able to watch the videos. Just All you have to do is click on the Nav Kids YouTube page and there's a channel for On a Mission. You can also get there from the links in our link tree, which mom and dad can get to all this through the emails that are sent out on Sundays. Well, you guys, I hope you have a great week and I'll be staying in touch and looking to meet with you guys again really soon. Just keep praying that God keeps working and that we get to start having nav kids in person sooner rather than later. You guys, how about I pray us out really quick? Why don't you bow your heads and close your eyes? Lord God, I come before you right now, and I just pray that as kids spend time with their families for the rest of the summer, going on vacation, playing outside, maybe even spending time with a couple friends or family, that you would be in the midst, Lord, that you would help them and, re and to remember that being a part of Acts 1 simply means to go, and that going can be as simple as talking to their friend next door, Lord, Give them the boldness and the courage to spread your love wherever they go. Lord, we pray right now for your protection and your peace. And Lord, we pray that as we get ready to head into the school season, that you would give us all peace and confidence to know that whatever is decided, however school looks, that you are in the midst. We love you, Lord, and we praise you and we thank you. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. Have a great week. I'll talk to you soon.